technology is man's inescapable future. Today, no business, regardless of industry or size, is immune to digital disruption. While the journey to digital transformation is unique for every country, Nigeria has largely evolved in line with global trend, although it appears to be always a step behind. When you say you are digitizing things, it means essentially that you are bringing things to automation, or shall I say computerization. Today, organizations are beginning to exploit the opportunities presented by digital technology to redefine business models, connect with customers, and to grow their brands. The banks have invested heavily over the years, starting from when debit cards, the first debit cards was issued in Nigeria, up to the ATMs, up to now we are going into virtual and reality system, artificial intelligence, okay? We are having machine learning systems being deployed by financial institutions. Now you are seeing banks coming up with robots with different names. Yes, a lot of innovation, this whole solutions come to a, with a lot of investments. I give banks the credit for this investment. I give banks the credit for trying to play by the rules and trying to ensure that the customer gets the best and most convenient financial service, okay, in terms of uh, digital delivery. Overall, let's remember that whatever we deploy is for the customer. But the speed at which industries are transforming digitally differs from one another. The culture systems, processes and even the capabilities of each industry all come into play when embarking on digital transformation. Thankfully, the Nigeria's financial space has taken to digitize transformation like fish to water. Right, so we have it core responsibility to continue to provide adequate security on our digital platform. And you know the statistics today. Um, as of June, the CBN said we've lost like about 5 billion to fraud on digital channels, right? But I tell you that is official figure. Okay, it's much more higher than that. Okay, the fraud stars don't sleep. And we are continuously upgrading and enhancing our systems to beat the tricks that they come up with. And even in, in including the social engineering and social exploitation of our customers. So security is paramount for us. Um, it is a challenge, but it's a surmountable challenge. The sector has produced massive advancement in operational efficiency leading to digitization of transactions 
such that the use and movement of physical cash are gradually declining. The biggest sign of Nigeria's success in the journey to digital transformation is government payments through a treasury single account called TSA, which has helped the government to realize billions of Naira that were hitherto not accessible, all thanks to digitization. And we are seeing technology and digitization play a role on government payments. So you see the disbursements happening today. A lot of digital payments going on. That doesn't take away the fact that in some very remote areas, there are still um, table payment and cash payment. And most importantly, digital entrepreneurship, right? You see a lot of small young business, almost every new startup today, you see every young man you see going into business, is going into a business that is going to be driven by digital. Education. Education is perhaps one of the most critical sectors that need urgent attention today. Digitizing education is, is really the future. It's, it's where every nation is driving towards. I used to speak with my grandma, she's late, late now, and the stories she tells us of when she was in school, some of them I can't relate with them now because they are so far-fetched. We've, so, we've gotten so bad that those things she says and the way te teachers were revered looks like it was ancient. Um, but it went bad in the hands of some people because of lack of revision and mismanagement. So now we need to rethink what should the education of Nigerian child be? Um, what should a typical school be? What should they do? What should learning look like? Um, investments in education reflect in the human capital development of the populace. So because that has not happened, it, it, it's, there's a reason to say that our education is, is quite shabby. And that's also because many of the educational institutions do not, are not operating at their fullest capacity. Um, sometimes you have more stu students in class than the teachers to teach them. For example, the UN standard is one teacher to 20 students. But then, you know, in our Nigerian schools, you have one teacher to 50 students and then 60 students. Health. The health sector is one that is currently undergoing sweeping digital transformations. The earliest sign is the increase in electronic health records in various health institutions, which is a critical asset in healthcare management.
Studies indicate that smartphone apps are now considered helpful tools in enhancing patient education, facilitating communication and patient engagement. It can only get better as we continue to use technology to transform the nation's healthcare system. Agriculture. Agriculture provides the most basic of human needs, food. It is also one of the first sectors to begin to grapple with how to use digital technology to improve production and distribution of its produce. The first part that has been very tremendous is the use of the GSM technology. Cell phones and so on has been the most useful. However, things that could have been very helpful, like using things like uh, drones to help you survey your land, those ones today are only few and far between. In actual fact, with the, with the uh, security issues in the country, those of us who want to use drones to survey our land and so on and so forth have challenges because uh, because of the security situation in the country, you can't do it. And so there are a number of things that are holding back, but in the computerization of the system itself is very important. Uh, there is a, an easy way um, of helping farmers determine the quality of their soil. This can be done electronically, but that's not been done. I heard the Prime Minister of Israel speak on the impact of digitization on agriculture. Then you see a nation that really understands what they are doing because they are able, listen to this, very interesting, they are able to track every crop and know in specific terms which one needs what quantity of water, which one needs what quantity of fertilizer and what type of fertilizer. That's what capacity of technology can do. The current funding arrangement we have a very short term, agriculture is a long term industry. Even where some of the farming practices are short term, like the horticulture and so on, the banks don't really have the understanding of what's involved here. Interest rates are extremely high. Efforts by the central bank, which are very well intentioned, don't seem to have been well synchronized with the commercial banking sector in Nigeria. And they are the ones that actually disburse the funds. So there is a disconnect between the central bank, who are encouraging it, the banks, who are taking part of the risk, 
and the actual benefits of post beneficiaries, which is the agricultural community. Transportation. The transportation sector, which is made up of the ports, land, sea and air, are at best chaotic. The sheer logistics required for effective transportation system is precisely the sort of situation that can be digitized and handled by technology.